Hey, what's up guys? Matt here from Laidlaw's Harley-Davidson coming to you today with another custom bike build that we just rolled out of our shop. So today we've got a 2020 Road Glide Special in the Billiard Red. And I want to thank Bobby first of all for allowing me to feature his bike on the YouTube channel here. So Bobby really wanted to do more of a touring focus by not really compromising style. So it's got things like tour pack, rider backrest on there. He went the full stage four build 117 kit on this bad boy. Did the Willy G inspired collection. So all your controls like floorboards and grips and everything. He did the Willy G on there and a bunch of other stuff. So I'm gonna go through the bike and kind of show you all the details of it. I'm gonna take it out for a rip and give you guys maybe some ideas for your next bike build. All right guys, so let's take a close look at this 2020 model year Road Glide Special in the Billiard Red. And I wanna do a competition, guys. I want you guys to try to guess how many Willy G skulls show up on this bike. I've counted them up, and I want you guys to comment below in the comment section how many Willy G skulls you find on this bike. And I'm gonna be highlighting the person's comment that gets it right, person or people who get it right. So count them up and let me know in the comment section below what you think, and I'll give you a virtual pat on the back if you get the answer right. So starting off with the front of the bike here, you've got Harley Davidson's Fang Spoiler, which is that, that spoiler that, that extends from the bottom of the fairing down to that shroud that encapsulates the oil cooler down there. So a really cool piece. They first came out with that on the CVO Road Glide in the 2019 model year. So you can order that right out of the catalog, all color matched and everything, which turns out pretty nice. So going around to the back of the bike here, he did the Harley Davidson Chopped Tour Pack, ordered by color from the factory, of course. He's got Bassani Megaphone exhaust on here. It's just the muffler only. He stuck with the Harley Davidson header pipe, the stock header pipe on there. And he's got some LED turn signals on here, which is the Drag Specialties LED turn signals. And he went with a rider backrest on there as well. It's just a Harley Davidson rider backrest. He stuck with the stock wheels. You've got the Prodigy wheels on here, which are just the, the brand new wheel that comes from the factory on this bike, new for the 2020 model year. So you can see the front turn signals as well, those drag specialty LED turn signals on there. Windshield fairing, lights, relatively untouched. There's a closer shot of the Fang spoiler. So you got Willy G axle nut caps. You've got the air cleaner Willy G. You've got the footboards, the brake pedal, all Willie G. And you can see the mirrors there, Willie G mirrors as well. And he went with the Factory 47 signature bar, 14 inch bars, and we'll get a closer shot of that in just a second. So he did a stage four setup on this as well with the CNC ported heads. So it's a 117 stage four and the bike absolutely runs and uh, yeah, I'll be taking it out in a minute. So fuel door right there, you've got the Willie G skull. Grips, Willie G of course. Here's a closer shot of that signature Signature factory 47 bar. It's a 14 inch, which is the tallest you can go and still utilize the factory stock cables. So we did not have to recable this bike and incur that expense as well, which I think the 14s are a great height, happy medium, it fits most riders. And I like, personally, I like my hands at the top of like the windshield or fairing area. I think that looks the best. Once you get too much over the fairing, it kind of becomes non-functional and you kind of defeats the, the purpose of a fairing. You just catch too much wind and your hands get really cold. Here's a closer shot of the engine there. You got the exposed air filter there. The CNC ported heads. He did run both of the tuners on this bike. So that's the Pro Street tuner. And then you've also the, the Auto Tuner Pro. We call it the Auto Tuner, which gets you the, the wide O2 sensor, the wide band O2 sensors on there. And yeah, this thing absolutely runs. So the power figures on the stage four, this thing puts out about 116 foot pounds of torque and it does about 125 horsepower. And the stage four, if you guys have watched my videos in the past, I've explained that the stage four really likes to be run at a higher RPM. So it's really good to the meat of the power. You got to run it at 4,000 RPM and higher. So it's definitely for the guy that likes to downshift and keep his RPM needle in the higher end of the spectrum of the RPM range. And he also uh, purchased the push rod tubes and like the tappet covers all black that some of that stuff on the engine like the engine detail is actually chrome from the factory so like the rocker box cover like the lower rocker box cover he went to the black one to completely black out the engine like i mentioned you know, there's a lot of chrome highlights and everything on this bike from the factory they don't block it black everything out completely there's another shot of the rider backrest there and he's got some sounds uh, stereo equipment on there so you can see in the top of the saddlebags there he's got the sounds speakers on there and they sound really good i i wish i could kind of translate the sound quality through a video really well but sound quality is only gonna be as good as your phone or whatever else you're listening to this video on and he, he did the sounds stereo setup in the the front fairing speakers as well and the whole setup comes with like their amp and their speakers and it sounds really good 
When Bobby first approached me, he has done several Harleys. He's owned several Harleys and built up several Harleys. And so he, he really had a good idea of what he wanted. In fact, when we were talking on the phone, I really didn't suggest much of anything because he already knew exactly what he wanted. And so, yeah, everything on here was 100% his idea and really his creation here. Latches on the tour pack are blacked out and black mounting kit for the tour pack, of course. I get asked questions a lot about the storage capacity of the different tour packs. So the Chop Tour Pack, you can't fit anything but a, a half helmet in here, like a full face helmet will not fit in the Chopped Tour Pack, where on the King Tour Pack, uh, you can fit up to two full face helmets. That's an argument to go with the King Tour Pack, but the Chop Tour Pack, in my opinion, just looks a, just a lot more sexy and just sleeker and more of that custom bagger look to it instead of that like that all in tour bike look. Here's a shot of the Bassani Megaphone exhaust on here. It's Bassani DNT megaphone exhaust, and it sounds really good. It's four inches, four inch pipes, muffler only, like I mentioned earlier. He also went to a Harley Davidson curved license plate frame. So the, the license plate frame that you see there is a genuine Harley Davidson one. And you can see more of the Wheelie G collection on here. You can see the clutch cover there, the derby cover as they call it. And then your shift pegs, floorboard. And then he also went to the Willie G horn cover as well. And to do the Fang spoiler, you have to do the chopped engine guard on there as well. You can't have the regular engine guard. So he went to the Harley Davidson chopped engine guard to accommodate for that Fang spoiler in the front. And another thing that he really wanted was the RDRS, which obviously is a factory item. So he got the RDRS on this bike. Just a closer shot of the Willie G mirror. They just recently came out with the Willie G collection all blacked out. You know, for the longest time it was only available in chrome and then recently i'm gonna say within the last year or so they came out with the willy g collection all all blacked out there's another shot of the engine you can kind of see there too like the push rod tubes are normally chrome you black that out and then like the tappet covers those are usually chrome the lower rocker box cover is usually chrome as well so he completely blacked that out and the bike turned out really nice this is just a, just a great bike to throw your passenger on the back and go for a couple day trip and get out of town and you know great for a highway you know that stage four pulls really really good out on the highway it's one of those bikes where you look down and you, you think you're doing like 65 and you look down and you're doing 100. Yeah, you can uh, you can get yourself into trouble with something like this. But uh, everything ties in good with those wheels. And the more I see the Prodigy wheel, the more I actually like it. At the beginning of the model year, I, I kind of had my doubts about it, but it's really growing on me. Prodigy wheels, you got 19 inch in the front, 18 inch in the rear. And he also did like the latches on the saddlebags. Normally it comes color match. So normally that's billiard red on the street glide and road glide, but he went with the black, which I think was a nice touch to, you know, really balance the red and black combination out throughout the bike. Interfering pretty much uh, untouched there. Of course he did do the sound speakers like I mentioned and this thing yeah just turned out really really clean. It's one of those bikes where you know it looks nice from afar and you're like oh wow he's got some nice touches on there but when you get close and you know really start counting everything up he really did a lot of work on this bike and Really has a good combination of what I would say are aesthetic based upgrades and also a lot of like functional based upgrades as well. You know, things like your, your backrest, your tour pack, uh, your upgraded stereo system, your engine kit. So, you know, he kind of ran the full gambit and, and spectrum of, of upgrading this thing. So anyways, enough talk, let's get out and run this thing.
Nothing quite like running a bagger hard down the freeway. This thing was a ton of fun. The exhaust sounded really good too. The DNT stands for deep and throaty and it definitely lived up to its name. I was especially impressed for it just for it being a slip on muffler as well. Typically the full exhaust systems have kind of like that really raw, really just loud sound to them. But the muffler I think was really good. And sometimes on a long ride, you don't really want that, that really loud blaring sound constantly droning in your ears for a really long time. I still got a lot of questions on stage three versus stage four. They both bumped the displacement up to 117 cubic inches, but the power delivery is completely different and how to access that power is significantly different as well. A stage three, I feel like is gonna be better for most riders especially most people that have been riding Harleys for a long time, you're going to be able to access that power a lot sooner in the RPM range. It's just going to be a lot more readily available and it's going to be just more of a, a cruiser style. It's just going to feel a lot more familiar to your typical Harley rider with the throttle and gear play. However, if you're someone coming from the sport bike world that you're used to really getting the RPM up there high, the stage four might be better for you. I also know a lot of guys that like to downshift and really like to play with the gears and the RPM just to find that sweet spot and, it's, and it adds an extra dynamic or layer to you know riding the bike. Some people like to chase the power a little bit more. It's kind of like the guys that prefer a stick shift car over an automatic transmission. Some guys just like that extra layer of racy feel to their bike. And for those guys, the stage four might be a little bit more fun as well. But just your normal casual Harley rider that just wants more power, the stage three is gonna be easier to ride, easier to access, and a lot less clutch and gear play. I want to talk to you guys about the number one most underrated and usually overlooked comfort item as well. And this item will also give you the best bang for your buck if you're looking for extra comfort out on the road. The Rider Backrest is by far the most underutilized and most overlooked item out there. A lot of guys will go to suspension first or a more comfortable seat, which those things are pretty good as well. But for $350, $400 installed, the Rider Backrest brings a huge level of comfort to a touring bike. I mean, once you start riding with one, especially long trips, it's going to be difficult to ever go without one. And I know a lot of people might be thinking, okay, well, yeah, that's like turns it into a real like geezer, lazy boy type of a bike. And I get that. I'm all about style as well. And that's kind of one of the main reasons why I don't run one on my bike. But I'll tell you what, if you're going on a long road trip, there's really nothing better out there than a nice rider backrest. Let me hear in the comments section, how many of you guys swear by the rider backrest? Let everybody else know how good they are.
So bottom line, the bike looks good, the bike ran good. This is the type of bike that I personally would own. Most of you know that I'm kind of partial to the touring chassis, mostly because of my height and also the type of riding I do. I do mostly highway miles with a mixture of other stuff like coastal and canyon riding. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of this build. Give Bobby some props by liking the video and smashing that thumbs up button. And don't forget to comment and guess how many Willie G skulls are on this bike. Thanks a lot for watching guys and I'll see you on the next one later.